My name is Eduardo Marban. I'm the head of the Cedar sinai Heart Institute. My laboratory here is focused on trying to understand how we can use basic discoveries to change the course of human disease uh, as it affects the heart more specifically. We're particularly interested in uh, stem cell biology, for example, as a way to, to treat disease. And we have a number of people from different fields that come to work with me on research. And so together we uh, tackle these uh, problems. A defining moment in our thinking about stem cells and what turned us to stem cells from the heart was in uh, 2003 when we realized that the heart uh, has its own reservoir of stem cells. Our thinking was that maybe there are stem cells there, those stem cells can rejuvenate the heart. They're way outnumbered in human disease, but if we can somehow purify them and isolate them and grow them up in large numbers and put them into where the damage is, maybe they can do their job with help from us. So we tried that hunch uh, in um, patients, adults who had had a heart attack and we found indeed that these cells could go into the zone of the heart attack and shrink the scar and grow new healthy heart muscle. So that finding was the one that spurred us on to think, gee, how might this help other kinds of heart disease? And ultimately that, with the help of Coalition Duchenne, took us to Duchenne cardiomyopathy, the heart failure that affects uh, patients with Duchenne. In terms of actually having decided to do the project, Coalition Duchenne was uh, pivotal, and in fact, uh, being able to provide the funds for getting us started, Coalition Duchenne was indispensable. Once we uh, started doing it, um, it became pretty clear pretty fast that there was not just an effect, but a very dramatic effect. We would inject these um, stem cells from the heart uh, into the the hearts of mice with uh, Duchenne-like uh, phenotype. And the hearts exhibited better function, they worked better, they had less scar, they had less inflammation, uh, they were even able to walk longer than mice that had not been injected with the uh, stem cells, I mean almost twice as far. Uh, that was unexpected to us because we expected the heart function to get better. We didn't necessarily expect that to influence the ability of the mouse to walk on a treadmill, but we saw an important uh, and pretty big signal there. Suffice it to say that we are sufficiently convinced of the underlying validity of the therapeutic principles that um, we're committed to uh, doing a trial in, uh, in patients with uh, Duchenne heart disease. So we take pieces of heart muscle from a, a donor, in this case a normal heart, that wasn't able to be used for transplantation for whatever reason, put them in a dish, and in the dish st these stem cells come out spontaneously from the heart muscle, and they're shown here as little yellow balls. Uh, we take these and we concentrate them in a uh, solution in a, in a dish, and then they spontaneously form into clusters, spherical clusters that are cardiospheres. And sometimes under certain conditions, these cardiospheres can actually beat. So we call them hearts in a dish. Um, but they have very nice uh, stem cell properties. We take those cardiospheres, put them back in a dish, and kind of melt them into the CDC product, which is shown here as isolated cells. And this is the product that ultimately contains the stem cells that go back into the patient. And this um, procedure depicts what a cardiac catheterization would look like. This is more in a, uh, a patient that's already had a heart attack, but the idea is the same. We go into one of the coronary arteries, infuse the uh, stem cells, and then they go across the wall of the blood vessel and they create new uh, heart muscle and blood vessels, uh, as shown uh, schematically here. The scar that's shown on this beating heart here in the cartoon you can very much think of that as the scar that would afflict um, the heart of a patient with Duchenne. So the idea is very much the same. And the next thing we do is to look for efficacy. We bring them back for MRIs uh, three months, uh, six months, maybe a year later, and see if that scar has gotten any smaller, see if it's failed to grow, because scars in Duchenne hearts don't get smaller on their own. So if we were to see that, it would be a real home run um, and would tell us that the um, therapy is working.